Wonder Woman soared into theaters this weekend, breaking one record and joining one very elite club. We're going to tell you more about it right here on Screen Junkies News. Wonder Woman opened this past weekend, and as of the shooting of this video, her box office grand total was, drumroll please, $103.1 million. Not only was it the best opening ever for a female director, but international receipts pushed total earnings closer to a whopping $223 million. The movie is currently open in 55 markets and no doubt will continue to earn major bucks when it opens in the coming weeks in large markets like France, Germany, and Japan. Not only did the movie earn tons of cash and goodwill for Warner Brothers and the DCEU, Wonder Woman herself also earned an additional bragging right. And here to talk with me about that are my very own brand of ice cream eating wonders, Mark Andreco and DJ Woldridge. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Mark morning. Mark Andreco currently clocking in with at least $35 worth of that box office receipt. I'm so bad at math because you've seen the movie five well, times. Well, three times were screenings in the oh, premiere, okay. so I paid twice. So I've got to see it. I'm going to see it at did least you, two more did times. Did you see it on IMAX 3D? No, I don't need to see it in 3D. I recommend, though. It was beautiful. Yeah, I don't like upconverted 3D. That's fair. How many times have you seen it now? Just the once, but it was worth it. I'm going to see it again. It All was right. amazing. I loved it. Well, with this giant opening, Wonder Woman joined a very elite club. She became one of the top five highest grossing opening weekends for a superhero origin story ever. So, to celebrate that, we're going to play a game because uh -oh. games are fun. Games are fun. In front of these gentlemen, we have five movies on different pieces of paper, and your job, when I tell you to go, is to put those in order of how you think they opened. If you guys want to play along at home, we're going to throw up the options. You're going to have 45 seconds. Are you ready? Sure. Uh-huh. Oh, you mark. Get set. Go. Oh. 45 seconds. Come okay, on. Okay, hold on. So we got Man of Steel. We got Deadpool. Uh, I believe there's some Spitterman in there, the amazing Spitterman. Iron Man, and of course, Wonder Woman. How did Done. they? Really? Wait. Whoa. Wait. Mark and Draco does Wait. not mess around. Wait. We I might not waiting. know sports Done. stuff, but That's I know it. movies. Done. What time is that? Fantastic. Oh. Hands off your paper. Gentlemen, reveal for us. Well, who feels most confident? Mark Me. feels, he feels most, confident. most confident. Let's go, Mark. What okay. you got? I would say Deadpool at number one, mm -hmm. Spider-Man at number two, mm -hmm. Man of Steel at number three, uh -huh. Wonder Woman at number four, uh -huh. and Iron Man at number five. Deej, what you got? I got, I went Spider-Man, maybe this is just my own personal, I don't know, uh, Spider-Man, Man of Steel, Wonder Woman, Iron Man, and then Deadpool, because this is most money overall, right? No, right. opening weekend. Opening weekend. Mm, opening I weekend. probably screwed up. Okay, so I will tell you, we're going to do this like the price is right. You have four, You sorry, you have three out of five right. No, I have five No, you five. have three out of five. <laughs> Mark's like, opening no, weekend. We I, no. Let's go to box office mojo. I'm right. telling you, you, I'm looking at it right now. You have Where's three out of five Where's our fact checker when we need I them? Can, I can tell DJ, you. DJ, you are a mess. You have zero out of five Yeah. Right. So we have some time left over. I'm going to give you oh, guys. I know what's wrong. Ten more seconds. Seconds. Fix what's wrong! Fix what's wrong! Fix what's wrong! Fix what's wrong! <laughs> um. Oh boy. It's. Oh, here we go. Okay, now I'm right. Now he's right. Now he's right. Yes. DJ time. That. I want everybody to just look at DJ's paper. <laughs> this is. Uh, okay. Man of Steel doesn't even get a mention. Okay. <laughs> DJ. Oh. Yes. You are so lucky you're good looking. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm lucky I'm smart. DJ's out of the game. Uh, Mark Andreco. You are right, yeah. sir. Mark yeah, Andreco with five out of five. Would you like to show the people the paper so now they can see exactly how to do it? That's right. So number mm. one, uh, there you go. Look at that. Deadpool, Man of Steel, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, Iron Man. I flipped Spider-Man and Man of Steel. And there yeah. you go. Perfect. So now that we know that she is the fourth highest grossing origin story. Mm -hmm. Yes. What happens next? What do you think? Obviously, Wonder Woman 2, fully greenlit. Mm -hmm. Patty Jenkins yes. still signed on. Uh, Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot also signed on. Mm -hmm. 
I've been saying for a while they're probably going to push that straight into production. Yes. Mark, what do you think happens now? Um, well, there's been a lot of internet talk about should she go to World War II, and I think we're not going to see a sequel in World War II because the Captain America movie already kind of sure. mined that that, mm -hmm. that land. Um, and I think now that we've got her backstory, I think it'll be set in contemporary times. There are lots of tethers to bring back Greek gods and lots of magic and mystic stuff, but I would kind of like to see her fully embrace being a superhero and see, like, Cheetah. Mm. We have to get Cheetah. Cheetah's you know, the I, best. I mean, I mean, it would be great if, since Patty Jenkins kind of knows Charlize Theron, to bring Charlize Theron on yep. as the Cheetah. Or how great would it be to see Angelina Jolie as Barbara Minerva? Yeah. I mean, it's oh, yeah. it's, it's great. Um, there's also a couple other great villains. Peter, There's a villain named Dr. Psycho, mm -hmm. who, Peter, who is a little person. Mm -hmm. Peter Dinklage would be great for that because he actually looks like him and can play sinister. I would love to see Giganta, you know, attacking yes! a 50 foot woman. I let's embrace the that. fun of superhero movies. Absolutely. Let's stop apologizing for being superheroes and let's just go full. Back. And I, I have a way for them to actually use the original TV show theme song in a sequel. Oh, please, I need it so badly. In George Perez's run on Wonder Woman, she had a, she had a, an agent named Mindy Mayer. You give her an agent now in current times and say, we've done test marketing, we even have a song for you, and you play the song. That's great. They're using the Spider-Man TV show theme in the in, new Homecoming. In Homecoming. Honestly, so I would not be mad it. if I'm on board. did become. I do love her theme. I oh, think the theme absolutely. is beautiful, both the drum solo and the original, but no. I would not be mad if they turned it into that. What do you want, Deej? Uh, well, Daniel Radford and I, I brought this up a couple times, we're talking on another video that we did, and we talked about having it be set in like the 50s or 60s where she can get that wa white ma jumpsuit, yep. and maybe a more of a spy thriller where she's working covertly and she gets the invisible jet. Yeah. I'm just thinking, I don't want to see World War II because we kind of, even if even if it had been mined in a million movies like Captain America, we, we got the same but better with yeah. Wonder Woman in World War One. you know what I mean? So so I, I don't necessarily want to see present day, yeah. but maybe 50s, 60s. I still am praying for the Themyscira standalone movie. I just want like an origin story of well, Themyscira. Well, sci-fi did just buy the, the Krypton TV show, they so have, they could do a Themyscira history, the, the origin of the Amazon. I, I would much that. rather see that series than the Krypton series. No. Yeah, they call it Paradise, their yeah. TV show. Perfect. Here's the question, Sold. though. What would you rather see, Wonder Woman for time number six or The Mummy for time number one? Because Universal has been banking so much on their dark universe, and they have The Mummy opening up this weekend. Tom Cruise is The Mummy. Uh, I have said for a while now that I don't think there is any chance that this takes the box office. Oh, mm -hmm. no. Any dissenters here? No, I think, I think the fact that this morning coming over here we saw that the drop between Wonder Woman, not counting the Thursday $11 million, went up from Friday to Saturday by like 30%, which is mm -hmm. unheard of, especially for a female movie by a female director. Then it only dropped 16% from Saturday to Sunday, which means the word of mouth is insane. I had all my neighbors had to go back to the theater twice because they were all sold out. And that's oh, in LA wow. where everybody's too cool for the room. Yeah. Wow. Um, I think Wonder Woman's hold, because it's such a, a lightning in a bottle like the original Keaton Batman, I think Wonder Woman has a chance of still grossing over 60 this weekend. I agree. But but you know what? That doesn't mean that The Mummy will be a flop. Because remember when Batman opened in 89, I'm old enough to have actually been there, Disney, everybody else didn't open movies. Disney opened Honey, I Shrunk the Kids opposite. And Honey, I Shrunk the Kids opened at a then record like $19 million opposite Batman's 50. So when the marketplace is thriving and people are at the theater, people want to go to the movies. Yeah. So Mummy is probably going to perform well and it's going to do great overseas because it's Tom Cruise. And I'm looking forward to seeing The Mummy. It's not an either or for me. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to The Mummy. <laughs> I just, I, it doesn't look like a horror movie to me, man. What about well, The Rock's not, Wolfman? You looking forward to that? No, it's I do like of, The Rock, though. I just, he'd like be better. I'd rather see him as Frankenstein's monster. Well, Harvey R. Bardem's going to do that. I'd actually like to see a Wolfman who has body hair. It's going to, the, the Wolfman's just going <laughs> to, he's going to be naked with his eyebrows. Yeah. He's going to be like the naked cat. He's going to be like a cat from the Austin I love Power. those naked cats. You're selling me on it. I, it's something I haven't see, seen before. I'm more something intrigued. I haven't seen yeah. before. Now you know? it's, it's interesting. The, yeah. that, if he's The Rock is the Wolfman, the Wolfman will be fighting mange. Yeah. I think they're. I think DJ and I are much more on a similar plane in terms of the mummy. I just want to see the Wolfman instead of. Typically, you see the Wolfman grow out of the human. I feel like with the rock, it just falls away, and the Wolfman climbs out, and is actually it's like smaller than the it's rock. Like Krang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just like, right there. It's this little puppy. Yeah. Well, with this, Patty Jenkins has a massive hit. Not to in any way devalue what she did with her first theatrical feature, which was Monster, which mm -hmm. won Charlize Theron an Academy Award, which was made for eight million and then grossed about 80. Uh, this is one of those films that I feel like is still held up across both independent and just mainstream cinema as sort of, it's a, it's a high watermark. Oh, now, it's, it's an amazing film, yeah. Doing Wonder Woman, we know she can do 
anything she wants. She can do a $200 million tentpole. She can do an $8 million indie. She's also done some great television work. She was nominated for an Emmy for directing the pilot of The Killing. Mm -hmm. Do you think she's going to adopt a one for you, one for me model of going back to like smaller, more independently minded cinema? Do you think she's going to do more television or do you think this now that she knows like, yeah, give me a hundred million and I'll show you what I can do. Where do you think she's going to go from here, Mark? Um, I think I actually don't think she's done one for them and one for her. After talking to her, she loves Wonder Woman. I love that she didn't do this because it's good for her career. I mean, it is ultimately going to change. She's going to have her, sure. uh, she can direct whatever she wants for the rest of her life. But I love that unlike some directors that we know about that come take one of these superhero movies to be able to jumpstart their careers otherwise, this was a one for her, one for her. She loves Wonder Woman and has devoted a long time to it. So I think, I think Wonder Woman too. I think they'll probably fast track now because it, you know, and I and I think she'll come back. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the thing about Patty Jenkins that is going to give her the longest career is she's so good with actors. She can get a great performance out of anyone. I yeah. mean, I remember being defiantly angry when I heard Charlize Theron was playing um, Eileen Morno. So I'm like, oh, pretty. What's she going to do? Gain weight? And that's one of the best ten performances I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. yeah. You forget you're watching Charlize Theron, and that. All goes back to a really confident director and Patty. I think I think every A-list actor in the world is going to be fighting to work for work with her, and I think she's going to do whatever she wants, and it's always going to be interesting. Yeah, and that, but that said, you know, if you're talking about the one for me, one for them thing, that's kind of like what Christopher Nolan did when he did Batman Begins, and then Prestige, and then Dark Knight, and then uh, Inception. Mm -hmm. I I am fine with whatever she does, whatever she wants to do. However, I do want a Wonder Woman to preferably sooner rather I than later. Think but that's going to happen. I I away. would like to see what she could do with. Uh, with more original stuff with the lease she has now, you know what I mean? Sure. Well, yeah. we were talking before we started about that she was in contention to do Thor 2. Yeah. And she actually was... worked on Thor 2 for a while before she left. Right. And the idea was much more of like a Romeo and Juliet mm -hmm. torn asunder, lovers yeah. in two worlds. Did not get that. Which I think would have been it awesome. Just, it would have yeah. been great. We didn't uh, get it. Now that the DCEU sees that she is a bright shining star in their universe, mm -hmm. Do they lock her in to do more? Does it go beyond Wonder Woman? Or do you think it becomes something where she is her own brand and she Nolans mm -hmm. and she does whatever she wants? I think splitting the difference. I think I think she probably has in mind a trilogy, at least for Wonder Woman. Yeah. And if you've if you if you've seen the interviews with her or get that ever talked to her, her love for Wonder Woman is infectious. She loves this character. This is not a job for her. Um, I think she'll stick around as long as she feels like she's interested and she has something to say. And that's what I respect about her because I think she could go follow this up with a Star Wars movie. She yeah. could follow this up with a $12 million movie about, you know, Bonobo, Bonobo monkeys. Yeah, I right. love Bonobos. And I would go see her do anything because she's such a confident director and the passion she has for the two films she's directed and if you watch the pilot for The Killing, you can tell this is a person who loves what they're doing and that yeah. reads on screen. So I'll follow her anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. I have a question for you, Mark. She also directed two episodes of Entourage. Mm -hmm. Have you seen those? No, I would rather. Eat, I would rather. <laughs> I would rather eat. I'm sure they're great for being Entourage, yeah. but I would rather eat glass than watch Jeremy Piven do anything. <laughs> I was just. I just needed to see. I just needed to know, hey, she like, needs to get her health insurance every year. Level yeah, you know. of fandom. How deep does it run? And now we know it the, goes. The bottom is <laughs> draping underneath that underneath that silk. There's Entourage. Yeah, yeah. Well, we want to know what you would like to see Patty Jenkins do next. Let us know in the comments below. You can tweet us at SJ News. Make sure to like and subscribe. And of course, you can always click here for more Screen Junkies news. We'll see you soon.